dissonance. You look at one thing, and you think another, and something else entirely is happening. You reach for something, pick it up, and hold on to nothing. How can you hold on to nothing, except if nothing was once something? The invisible string theory. People that are destined to meet will meet. But to me, it means something deeper, much deeper. In general, people are based off of memories. A person is an amalgamation of all of the memories that they have made throughout their lifetime. Assimilation is big, then, in the development of a person. People reflect their environment. So what happens if your environment is fractured? The results can be seen in hundreds of thousands of immigrant families in the US. In the US. Obviously, these people have come from all over the world. And from the 1880s to the 1920s, America saw major waves of migration. These people came to America hoping for a better life, under the impression that no matter where they came from, there would be a place for them in America. This idea would later be coined into the term the American dream. Now, a full century later, America looks quite different. These immigrant families have settled down, created roots. They had children, and those children's children had children, and so on and so forth. I am one of those children. I was lucky enough to be born into an amazing, wonderful, loving family where culture was a big part of my life growing up. Even so, I could only call myself Gujarati when talking about my ethnicity or my culture. I am still very much, first and foremost, American. Still, my culture remains a big part of who I am today, especially the parts that I lost. Well, how does that work? Well, when I was in kindergarten, I was trilingual. I spoke English as a natural byproduct of growing up in America, Gujarati from my family, and Spanish from my nanny Cynthia. This is where the issue began. When I started school, I started to speak English a lot more than I did Gujarati and Spanish. I was speaking English both at school and at home. Eventually, my parents started talking to me in English more as well, because it was what I initiated conversations with. They didn't realize that I was slowly losing the ability to speak and understand Gujarati. And this is why I am standing in front of you today, because there are so many others who have experiences like me. And these people want to reconnect with their culture or maybe get in touch with it for the first time after settling into the status quo. As such, I've put together a presentation for you all. The first three definitions of the first three generations of immigrants is as followed. A first generation immigrant is someone who is born in another country and migrates to another. A second generation is someone who has at least one immigrant parent. The third generation is someone who was natively born but has at least one parent who is a second generation, AKA at least one grandparent who is an immigrant. You get the idea. Every succeeding generation came from an immigrant descendant. I myself am a third generation. Following up on the slides, I have a series of slides showcasing data published by the Pew Research Center from approximately 2000 to 2012. These slides focus specifically on first and second generation immigrants using a scale of one to 100%. As you can see, second generations are much more assimilated than first generations. They are more likely to consider themselves to be American than their parents' original nationality. This is a result of their household securities. First generations have a notoriously hard time entering US in the modern day. They work hard in order to provide for their children and give them the means to make a better life for themselves. And they succeeded, as shown in the graphs where the second generations have a higher rate of household ownership, education, income, with a marked decrease in poverty. However, this came with the trade-off of their culture. Second generations can speak English much better than their first generation counterparts. However, there is a decrease in proficiency within their own ancestral languages because their ancestral language has lost value to them as there is no use for it in American society. Yet, as a result of this, 
the community that they have access to is greatly limited, as a large portion of the first generation still fluently speaks the original language. This culminates in the second generation considering themselves to be much more American. When asked how they would describe themselves as, most would describe themselves with American, maybe hyphen American, but there is still a very small portion who identify as their parents' original nationalities. Well, we've talked about first and second generations. What about the third generations and beyond? The ones who were born in America to American parents? Well, I've put together a series of testimonials for you guys from popular internet forum, Reddit. Internet forums like Reddit and Quora are a great way to get real answers from real people. And yes, I know the usernames look silly, but in my opinion, in my research, I found that it provides a better general consensus without any bias or any of the cultured way that some of the studies are put together. Um, I will say, though, that I did not specifically ask the question how people feel about their cultural identities. There have already been numerous talks and academic threads on Reddit about this. So, this slide shows uh, testimonials from the third generations. The third generations observed that their elders opted to hide their cultural identities. This is most likely due to the fact that in the early 1900s, when most of the immigrants came to America, racism was highly prevalent, and it still is today. As a result, the first generations chose to and highly encouraged their children to pass, a term used for those posing or trying to appear as the typical white American citizen. In contrast, the fourth generations had a similar problem, but in reverse. They feel American, but they feel disconnected from their cultural identity, and they don't know how to close the gap. In particular, one Reddit user, Suki, the first one, used the phrase perpetual foreigner. Now, this is an incredibly important phrase as I feel that it sums up the current experience of a large portion of third generations and onwards perfectly. Obviously, people of different ethnicities and cultures and races will look different from, again, what is described as the typical American citizen. Right now, currently in the US, there is still a large disparity between immigrants and the higher, the higher tax income of the population. <clears throat> there is still a lot of casual racism that is prevalent in the US, and it can be shown in phrases like these. This leads to what is called the American social norm as immigrants still try and fit into these American social norms while still feeling as though if they connect themselves to their cultural identities, they will be treated differently. However, I would like to say that, of course, this is not true for everyone. Taking the consensus of a huge population like the immigrant population is impossible. I'm simply taking an oversimplification of the topic in order to identify the underlying causes that still affect a large portion of the population today. And what I have identified is intergroup marginalization. The interpersonal distancing that occurs when an acculturating individual is believed to exhibit behaviors, beliefs, and values that are outside the heritage culture's group norms. In psychology, this refers to the perceived rejection of one's original culture as a result of trying to assimilate to another. This marginalization sets into motion what I call the disconnect. The moment when immigrant families become disconnected from their cultural identities as a result of trying to fit into the normativity of the societal public norms. People in the disconnect often feel lost. They want to reconnect to their culture, but they don't know how. They've forgotten it, just like Al I forgot to speak Gujarati. Even so, it's not impossible. It's just like any other hard task. You see a mountain in front of you and your brain pulls up all the work it'll take to climb it. The sight is intimidating. Still, the only way to get over that mountain is to climb it. All you have to do is take it one step at a time. My step, ik, bek, Tran, Jar, 
Baj, J, Sat, Ak, No, Thus. 10. In Gujarati. Culture loss is a terrible thing to experience, but in the end, it is our differences that make us unique. We don't have to experience what we define as culture on the same wavelengths. Culture can be anything from trying a recipe from your childhood to counting to 10 in your native language. If nothing was once something, then make something out of nothing. What you perceive yourself to be and what you present yourself as is completely up to you. And as for me, well, who knows? Maybe by this time next year, I'll be able to translate any number into Gujarati.